I want to say that it is calm and quiet here but it isn't the wind is howling outside it is a very stormy day here in England a lot of wind a little bit of rain but don't worry because all of those clouds are about to float away because we are here once more again yes it's another English addict live from the birthplace of English which just happens to be oh my goodness I can't believe that this is true yes it's England <laughs> Hi everybody this is Mr Duncan in England how are you today are you okay I hope so are you happy are you happy I hope you are feeling happy today we are all here together again on YouTube live thank you very much for giving up your Sunday morning or maybe Sunday afternoon or maybe Sunday night thank you for doing it for me it's so nice to see you back once again and it's so nice to have your company on what can only be described as a very stormy day we have wind a lot of wind all week in fact and I'm not talking about Mr Steve's bowels I'm talking about the weather we've had a lot of wind quite blustery and if there's one thing that I don't like when I'm trying to sleep at night it's the wind <laughs> once again I'm not talking about Mr Steve I'm talking about the weather it is blustery and quite often the wind will batter and make strange sounds as it rumbles across the house so quite often it is very hard to concentrate and maybe get to sleep and the wind is blowing outside it's been a busy week here I will be honest with you Mr Steve went for his injection his first vaccination we will find out later on what happened with that also we have something else to talk about today I received a very important letter through the post what is it all about I will tell you about this later on it is something that is affecting everyone here in the UK so a very important letter I will talk about this later on with Mr Steve also we have a subject to talk about today silence <sighs> some people say that silence is golden however some people prefer to have a little bit of noise a little bit of commotion in their life so those are the words we are looking at today those are the words we are looking at and we will be looking at them today during this live stream yes my name is Duncan I talk about English I've been doing this for ever such a long time do you know how long I have been doing this for I have been doing this for many many years almost 15 years on YouTube and I'm still going strong despite <laughs> the YouTube algorithms trying to do the opposite oh some important news to give you by the way yes this week it's back by popular demand now I'm often accused of not listening I'm often accused of not reading your comments can I just say that I do and I have received a lot of people writing to me their comments and questions Mr Duncan why don't you make any more full English lessons so I've decided to put that right this week there was a new full English lesson yes after I think it must be nearly two years since I made a full English lesson it must be almost two years can you believe it but this week there is a new full English lesson 
and it was posted on Friday however my new full English lessons will be posted from next week on Wednesday so every Wednesday there will be a new full English lesson so I hope you are pleased to hear that and there you can see the thumbnail for the the last one that I put on which was on Friday so this is a brand new episode of full English and I am making some new ones <laughs> after I think it must be nearly two years since I made one so, so that is now available on my YouTube channel and you can find the link underneath this video the video you are watching now you can actually find the link underneath and that is the link to my latest full English lesson yes they are back <gasps> incredible can I say hello to the live chat hello live chat we will be talking to you in a moment because yesterday well I decided to have a little bit of a rest yesterday so instead of going into town with Mr Steve I stayed at home and Steve went into town and in certain parts of the UK especially I suppose Wales at the moment in Wales they are starting to ease the lockdown so as I'm sure you are aware in many countries including here many people have been forced they have been told to stay at home but I think over the next four or five weeks things are starting to to be eased when you ease something it means you relax you ease you you take away certain rules maybe something that you've been told to do then maybe that freedom will be will be given back you see <clears throat> I hope so hello to everybody on the live chat nice to see you here and already my throat is starting to <laughs> I don't know what's going on with my throat <clears> throat> it's very strange I'm not sure if it's the weather or what but some very strange things going on with that hello to the live chat and yes as I said we have made it all the way to the end of a week that has been busy for me and also Mr Steve but has it been busy for you as well yes it's Sunday <laughs> just drinking some water excuse me <coughs> I don't know what's happened to my throat my voice <laughs> once again is being very annoying <clears throat> I haven't used it much maybe that's the reason why maybe I should be using my voice more and not less yes we have Mr Steve here later on wasn't it a lively show last week very lively we had a very heated discussion that's all I'm saying I hope you didn't get the wrong idea now we were talking about some some very sensitive issues last week and Mr Steve and myself we didn't agree on everything but that's one of the fun things about having a conversation you can't always agree on things you can't it's impossible imagine being in a relationship where both people agreed on everything all the time that would be a very dull and maybe uninteresting relationship so sometimes people do disagree it's okay you can disagree it is possible to say well I think this and you are welcome to say but I think the opposite it's okay you see it's all right 
It doesn't matter. So Mr. Steve and myself are here. <laughs> Can I say hello to the live chat? Hello to you. Nice to see you here as well. I wonder who was first. I'm just having a look to see who was first here today. Oh, hello, Beatriz. Oh, very nice, Beatriz. I can't believe it. Guess what? You are first on today's live chat. <laughs> very good. I'm not sure how often you have been first, but congratulations for being first today on the live chat. Hello, Beatriz. Hello, Valentin. Oh, we also have Luis Mendez is here once again. Nice to see you too. Also, we have Palmira. Mr. Bruno is back. Nice to see you as well. Hello, Mosen. Hello, also Olga, Richard, Maria. We also have, oh, Ricardo is here as well. Lots of people wanting to say hello to each other. And that is one of the most amazing things about the Internet. I know a lot of people think the Internet is a horrible, stinky place where bad things happen all the time. But I think the Internet is brilliant. I really do. I love technology so much, especially when it brings people together. We often hear about people fighting and falling out and disagreeing and maybe in some cases becoming violent towards each other for various reasons. But the Internet also can bring people together. There is a lot of positivity, a lot of joy, a lot of happiness, even if sometimes people disagree. You can still do it. You can still have those conversations as long as you keep it all nice. And you don't start hitting each other. <laughs> but that can happen away from the Internet. So you can't blame the Internet for everything because sometimes people do stupid things. It has nothing to do with whether they are on the Internet or not. Hello also to Chinthana. Hello, Chinthana. Chinthana Kavinda. I love your name. Kavinda. That's very nice. It sounds very it's almost poetic. I can almost hear it being carried on the breeze. Cavenda. Very nice. Guadalupe is here. Also Blanca. Hello to you, Victoria. Oh, my goodness. So many people are now joining in. Isn't that nice? It's always nice to see you here, by the way. <laughs> I'm always very relieved to see you here with me to be honest or else I would be standing here talking to myself hello also to oh edit edit Goulet is here as well also Rosa Bluebird Sura oh by the way we are playing the sentence game for those who are wondering there is a sentence game taking place today so do not worry Beatrice says it's a very interesting lesson, your new full English, Mr. Duncan. Thank you very much for your effort. That's OK. And I will be filming another one tomorrow. Apparently tomorrow the weather is going to be nice. And I've started working on the script for the next full English lesson. So hopefully I will be outside tomorrow filming. And on Wednesday there will be a new full English lesson. Hello, Sandra Gonzalez. Hello, also Rosha. Hello, Rosa Celia. In Russia, they are celebrating Pancake Week. Does the same thing happen in Lithuania or Ukraine? Well, I know that we have Pancake Day. I think for most people, this particular celebration is connected to fasting during Lent. So that is why that is happening. Also today, I suppose I should also mention today. Oh, here in the UK, it is Mother's Day. 
today in the UK mothers are being celebrated and also thanked for their hard work raising their offspring be it their son or daughter or otherwise something else maybe happy mother's day to all the mothers watching mr steve sent some very nice things to his mother a card some flowers and also some chocolates as well apparently this year sending flowers has become a very expensive thing because there is a shortage of flowers at the moment here in the uk for various reasons one of the reasons of course is coronavirus the other reason is brexit as well which has been delaying the transportation of flowers from europe mainly holland you see holland is a place that produces many many different types of flowers and apparently one of the flowers that we love here in england <laughs> is the lily apparently lilies are very popular here in england apparently it is the most popular flower that people buy to give to somebody else so as a gift lilies are actually very popular Zudzika also gives a lovely comment thank you very much i have enjoyed the latest full english lesson thank you very much it's very kind of you to say we also have belarusia is here hello belarusia nice to see you back where you belong on the live chat also we have can i say hello to oh that's interesting victoria i think i've said hello to you already <laughs> hello also to marietta we also have oh hello to pedro belmont is here today hello to you watching in brazil right now nice to see you back should we say holland or the netherlands some people say holland some people say the netherlands but it's basically the same thing and a lot of the flowers that we give as gifts here in england and i suppose the uk as well come from that part of the the european union <laughs> of which <laughs> we no longer belong <sighs> Mr. Bruno says the white lilies are often typical. They are typical flowers used for funerals. Yes, you are right. And we do the same thing as well. We often use lilies for for floral arrangements during funerals. So if you go to a place, maybe a church that is having a funeral service, you will often see lilies so yes there is a very strong connection between funerals and lilies as well in fact that's one of the reasons why mr steve's mother does not like lilies for that very reason hello ciro ciro spang spangnulo hello to you that is a great name by the way all I can say is I hope I've pronounced it correctly. Hello, Ciro. I am here from Piazzenna, Piazzenna in Italy. Hello, Mr. Duncan. I'm glad to see you. Is it your first time, I wonder? Can you please tell me? Ciro, is it your first time? And have I pronounced your name correctly? <laughs> Probably not hello Olga I don't like the smell of lilies it makes me feel sick it is interesting how certain smells or aromas can actually make you physically feel unwell so even something like the, the smell of a flower maybe a certain type of flower the scent might be very strong and pungent 
that's a great word a very strong overpowering smell something that really makes you feel maybe a little sick and well something you really don't like to smell can be described as pungent a strong odor is pungent so yes it is interesting how certain smells can make you feel a little unwell there is a certain type of fruit that is often found in Malaysia and I remember when I was there <laughs> a very stinky type of fruit called a durian and inside you have this lovely white flesh so inside it smells very nice but when they are on display in the market they give off a very strong smell a very stinky aroma a little bit like my feet sometimes first thing in the morning hello Heverson Gamma Heverson nice to see you here can I also say thank you very much for your lovely comment on my YouTube video so yes I, I do read your comments a lot of people think I don't I'm not the same as other youtubers I always look at your comments I always read your comments For the ignorant, <laughs> Holland and the Netherlands is the same and is used interchangeably. In fact, Holland is the only part of the country called the Netherlands. By the way, greetings from here. Thank you, Mr. T. Can I call you Mr. T? You might be a lady, in which case I will say Miss T <laughs> or Mrs. T. I don't know you see but thank you very much for that yes I have actually been to the Netherlands a very nice place a lovely place I've spent a, a couple of very nice weekends touring Holland and um, in particular uh, Amsterdam very lovely place very beautiful if you like flowers then I can strongly suggest that you go to Holland they have a lovely selection of them thank you for your nice welcome mr duncan it's all right it's my pleasure hello alok ria hello from india a big hello to india i hope everything is all right where you are everyone at the moment is having some sort of difficulty or struggle but we are all thinking of each other i know it's a very small small action sometimes thinking about another person might seem small and insignificant but you might be surprised to find out how how important it is to think about each other even a little thought in the morning when you wake up for example when i woke up this morning i thought of my mother so my mother sadly is still in care and because of the lockdown situation i can't even go to see her so so for those wondering what's happening with my mother that is what is happening um, my mother now doesn't know who I am that's the other sad part of it so my mother doesn't even recognize me anymore so that's that's a little sad but I'm not here to talk about my problems I'm here to talk about the English language in a few moments we have mr. Steve here we will be talking about this letter I had a letter come through the letterbox a couple of days ago and this is a very important letter we will be talking about this in a few moments time also some words and phrases to do with silence and noise all of that coming up a little bit later on I hope you will enjoy today's live stream wherever you are watching in the world you are very welcome to join in mr. Steve will be here in a few moments but first well earlier on I did mention my full English lessons and I'm now going to show you an excerpt from one of my later full English lessons in fact <laughs> this was the last one that I made 
before I started making my new ones last week this is taken from full English number 40 and then after that he's back and hopefully <laughs> he's in a good mood yes in a few moments we have live in the studio <laughs> mr. Steve <laughs> Are you learning English? Do you find it difficult to remember words and their definitions? Well, guess what? You are going through the most normal part of learning anything. Grasping something new is not easy at first, but don't worry because help is at hand. My full English lessons will make learning English a doddle. It will become as easy as pie. From now on, it will be a piece of cake which means easy. I will help you overcome your worries and fears of mastering English. In fact, you are doing it right now, just by watching this video. Welcome to another full English video lesson. I'm happy to see you here watching me teaching you. So without any more dilly-dallying or idle chit-chat, let's get on with today's full English lesson right now do you ever hear someone make a statement that seems hard to believe has anyone ever said something to you that you found hard to accept as true this might happen when someone is trying to impress you with something they have done a thing they saw or something that happened to them that seems unlikely there are many ways of expressing the reaction of disbelief. You doubt what the person is telling you is true. You question the facts or you find what was said questionable and hard to believe. You are uncertain as to what was said is in fact true. We sometimes like to exaggerate or embellish an event or achievement. You might find what was said hard to swallow. He claims to have been to university, but I find that hard to swallow. In this sentence, we are expressing doubt about the claim. There is a good chance that the claim is false. If you find something hard to swallow, then you are expressing doubt. You feel as if the statement is false and untrue. You find it hard to swallow. Another great expression refers to taking something with a pinch of salt. Again, the thing being said is hard to believe. His claims that he lived in Hollywood for a few years should be taken with a pinch of salt. The thing said seems unlikely. It seems as if the person is telling a lie. We might accuse someone of being full of crap or full of shit. You never went to university. You are full of crap. The thing being said might be described as bullshit. An untrue statement or false claim can be described as bullshit. Or if you want to be polite, we can say that someone is full of it. He never went to university. He is full of it. An official statement or declaration that seems untrue can be described as inaccurate or misleading. To accuse someone of lying can be described as calling someone out. The person lying has been revealed to be a fraud. A false claim can be described as fraudulent. The company was punished for the fraudulent claims about their product. In everyday life we might make the occasional claim that is slightly exaggerated. To make something seem better or worse than it was is a normal part of social interaction. However, these claims can sometimes get you into deep trouble. To be revealed as a liar or cheat is damaging. So as long as the claims made are not too bizarre or damaging, 
then we are often willing to look the other way. We accept that sometimes a person is not being completely honest with us. An outlandish claim or wild story that seems unlikely will often be taken with a pinch of salt. What is it to express yourself? How do we define those little signals that we give off? Do we really have control of what we give away about ourselves? When we say express yourself, we mean that you show the way you feel, your interest in or reaction to something. You can express yourself in two ways, by doing or by saying. Doing normally means a physical action using your body. Maybe the expression on your face will change, but you say nothing. You pull a face. Or you might show your reaction by doing something physical. You might become agitated and wave your arms with frustration or anger. You might react passively and walk away. We call these reactions body language. You might express yourself by saying something directly. This is not subtle. This is direct communication. You are expressing yourself using words and the tone of your voice. You might even use bad language and swear. I have never heard him swear before. He must have been furious. You might just say what you feel without cursing or swearing. Perhaps you will shout and yell. Or the opposite might occur and your voice may become very soft and hard to understand. So direct action using movement and speech are the two most obvious ways of expressing yourself. You may not realise it, but we actually use body language all the time. Even when we are sitting still and saying nothing, we are sending out messages to other people. For example, if you are sitting near a person you like, then your body language will show it. And of course, if you are near someone you don't like, then your body language will also express it. I can see by the way you are sitting that you don't want to know me. When we are looking for a partner, then body language is very important. You want the other person to know you are attracted to them. There are many ways to get the attention of a possible mate, but out of all the possible methods, body language is still the best. We call this particular action flirting. Both men and women are capable of this. You could say that it is a part of nature, just like the wild animals in the jungle. So the next time you are sitting on a train or enjoying a party or just walking through town, Remember, you are always giving off signals to other people. Your body language is always sending out those subliminal signals that have the ability to give away what is really going on in your mind. And there it was, one of my later but not the latest <laughs> it isn't the latest full English because there is actually a new one which was posted on Friday and there will be another one. Oh my goodness I am working so hard these days there will be a new full English lesson another one posted on Wednesday this week I can't believe it yes I am such a busy bee right now. Here we go. Hello. Hello, Mr. Duncan. It's hello good. to everyone out there. Yes, I'm back. <laughs> <laughs> would you like, just would you like some applause? Go on. Yeah. 
<laughs> so have you had a good uh, uh, lesson so far mr well, Duncan? what about that megan markle oh hang on <laughs> no maybe not <laughs> well <laughs> You really are playing with fire, Mr. Duncan, playing with fire. There we are. I've got an idiom in to the live stream already. Good. Probably the same one that I used last week. Yes, which we will not talk about. So now, you've had a busy week, Steve. Oh, yes, but I have. Last Monday, you had your first <laughs> vaccine <laughs> injection. So you've had part one of of what will eventually be two <laughs> vaccines <laughs> well after the reaction i've had to it i may not go back for the second one <laughs> yeah although probably in order to uh be socially responsible okay i probably will but yes no i wasn't very well uh but i won't go into it but uh, i'm much better now good uh so there you are so anyway you Mr. Duncan, have had a letter. I've had the letter to invite you to go for your first injection. Yes, so I'm going. I'm have just, you booked it up yet? I haven't booked it yet. I've had a letter telling me that I can book my injection. However, I wanted to use Steve as a guinea pig. Have you ever you heard that expression? It's a great expression, by the way. If you use someone as a guinea pig, it means you are testing something on them. So I want to see what happens to Mr. Steve, first of all. So it's been nearly one week since he had his vaccine. So so nothing seems to have dropped off. Nothing. I'm perfectly normal. Nothing. <laughs> has, <laughs> nothing has shrunk. Well, I, I'm behaving normally, aren't I, Mr. Duncan? As far as I can tell. <laughs> Yeah, perfectly normal. Exactly. See, that, I mean, that's <laughs> that's normal for Mr. Steve. Oh, but, oh I feel a bit weird. So I feel all queer. We, <laughs> <laughs> after my... Oh, Vittoria. We, don't forget about the live... Well, Steve I, yeah. always forgets about... I don't the, forget about the live chat. Don't be silly, Mr. Duncan. I've got all my notes here. Yes. This is the introduction, you know, when I say hello to everybody. That's it. That's done now. Exactly. That's, we've yes, passed. I am fine. Thank you very much. Victoria says, after my first injection, I was sleepy and shivered. So that's what you had. You had a slight, a slight fever, but then it went away very quickly. Slight. My temperature was uh, was uh, was uh, ninety eight, which is one hundred and two Fahrenheit. Was it ninety nine? It was Where no. Is it? Uh, oh. Yes, I, I, it was 102 Faren, uh, Fahrenheit. I don't know what that is in centigrade. I think it was... Uh, s oh, I can't remember now. What's the normal body temperature in The normal body centigrade? temperature, it's about, sort of, it's about 90, 93.4 or something. That's, centi that's Fahrenheit. I know. Well, I don't 30, it's around 38, 36, I think. Okay. So I think mine was 38, something like that. It was, it was very high anyway. Okay. Shivering, cold. I felt like I got flu coming. <laughs> And I was ill for about three days, but I'm over the worst. I'm over it now. I'm back yes. to normal. Well, there's only a couple of days, and then and then Mr. Steve yes. is, is back to normal. So whatever that is, whatever yes, normal. Yes, Maria, is. that was the make I had. Okay. Uh, so yes, we were, we don't was. want to talk too much about this because we're not here to, to to say don't do it or don't take it. What I'm just saying is Mr. Steve felt a little poorly, but then he was fine. Look at him now. Well. Of course, when I'm poorly, I get no sympathy at all from Mr. Duncan. He was None. In, he was in the garden this morning. Can I just show you what Mr. Steve has been doing? Well, you're not secretly filming me again, no. are you, Mr. Duncan? No, this is live. This is a live image. Well, it can't be live because I'm here now. I'm not in the garden. Yes, but you're not there in the image. It's just, oh, I see. It's just a pile of wood. There's a pigeon, look watching oh, yes can you see the pigeon so this is actually a live view but this week we've had some of the trees chopped down now for some strange reason i don't know why some of the trees in our garden have died so so we had to have a nice man come this week our friend from new zealand <laughs> came and he's he's actually chopped some of the trees down that were dying in fact about three or four of them were dead <laughs> yes th these are these are conifers hmm. 
uh, Leylandi conifers so they are used are, for hedging. Yes, they're a type of evergreen tree. Yes, that's right. So, uh, and I asked the uh, tree surgeon. Yes. As we call them here in the UK, or yes, tree surgeon, uh, who cuts down trees and looks after trees. Yeah. To chop them up, um, well, to put them into into logs. Okay. So that we could burn them on the fire. Yes. So we have lots and lots of logs all ready to be dried out, and they will be going on the on the fire. And Mr. Steve has to get his chopper. So at the moment you don't have one, do you? No, Mr. I, Steve yes. has no chopper, unfortunately. So he's going to have to find one. He's actually put an advert on the internet asking if there's anyone with with a large chopper that they that can come round here, and and Mr. Steve wants to use their chopper for a short period of time. But you've had quite a lot of replies, but 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 most of them. <laughs> have just been men with their trousers down so that's, that's Duncan, nothing yes. that's nothing to do with it you see we, no mr steve wants to chop a tree you yes. see he wants to chop no a, i don't want to chop a tree yeah no. he wants to chop the wood so he's cutting the wood to make it smaller so it will fit on the fire so i need an axe an a x e an axe axe but as i discovered yesterday there are at least two types of axe at least and uh, there are two main types there are actually three uh, and if you buy the wrong axe then um, it wouldn't have done for what I want so I want to be able to turn those logs mm -hmm. and split them yes into smaller pieces so take one of those big logs in the center that needs to be split into, say, four yes. so that it's small enough to put on the fire. Yes. Well, you've got to use a particular type of axe for that called a splitting axe. And we didn't realise this, did we? No. If you buy the wrong type of axe, the other type of axe is, is a, has a much thinner blade and that's used for actually chopping down trees hmm. or hacking into big branches. Yes. But it won't split wood, so you've got to get one. If I can demonstrate, I don't know if this is too boring. Well, it, it is a bit. <laughs> uh, <laughs> At least I'm being honest. There we go. That's it. That's the axe head. Oh, yes. So that one there is thinner, used for chopping down trees. That one, you want that. See, if I was to put the... Uh, we, we have to move on, Steve. <laughs> We've got a million billion things. There we go. Anyway, to cut a long story short, I'm just, I'm just trying to. You need a special axe for splitting wood. <laughs> Steve has gone to so much trouble to draw these pictures. I'm just trying to sort of. I'm not very good at drawing. It's boring. There anyway, Miss, how boring! We don't want to talk about axes, Mister Duncan. There we go. By the way, there is an expression: if you get the axe, a person can get the axe or the chop. Yes, it means that they they have been sacked or they have been told to leave. A company maybe they were working in for a company and then they did something really bad and they were given the axe or something was cancelled it was axed Ooh. Oh, yeah, but people are very, very sad about um, did an axe give you a splitting headache oh, oh very funny very good yeah T whoever you are yes if you get a splitting headache it means your your head is really hurting so much you get a headache it feels like maybe you have an axe in your head well and i did get a splitting headache from having that vaccine yes uh but, so, the, but yes. the side effects come and then they go very quickly so steve was right as rain a, a few hours later he no, had it wasn't he it had, took a few days okay <laughs> a few days mr duncan all right then. I'm trying to play down, I'm play not. down my my illness. I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yes, I think uh, a lot of people are commenting because they've obviously read about this. There's a certain make of vaccine which seems to be causing more side effects than others. Okay. Uh, but uh, I, d I didn't think we were going to talk about this. <laughs> might be uh, why the European Union I uh, don't think have yet given 
that particular vaccine approval yet. No. Anyway. Uh, but anyway, we won't go into that, <laughs> uh, although we already have. I think you have, Steve. So in, in around about 10 minutes, we have flags of the world. So Ooh. if you are waiting for the flags of the world, then you will have to wait for another eight minutes. And I am going to try and add Uzbekistan. I think Uzbekistan is missing from my flags of the world. So I will try to to add that if I can maybe next week. <laughs> to the flags of the world oh dear are you okay i'm fine i'm just laughing at uh at uh, anyway i won't comment or shall i i don't know it will <laughs> i think we have a troublemaker mr duncan really yes and i think they know exactly what they're doing and i think i know who that person is okay <laughs> I, d I don't know I even I don't know what you're talking about and I'm here. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, Mr. Duncan. Right. Uh, people are talking uh, a lot, th wishing as well for Mother's Day. Yes, it's Mother's Day today, everyone. So Not just in the UK. So where else? I don't know. Oh, OK. That's... Not in America. I know that much. But then yeah. we've got nobody watching in America. Or have we today? That's it. Yes. Only certain countries are celebrating Mother's Day. So hello to all you mothers out there. <laughs> yes. And there must be a lot of you on watching today. Uh, do, you so... think, do you think your mum is watching? No, because she is at my <laughs> sister's. Oh. Uh, she's at my sister's today and they're having a meal. OK. Uh, because my sister is within the uh, my sister and my mother are in the same bubble. OK. So in the UK uh, at the moment, you can only see somebody uh, go to their house if they're in the same bubble as you. Yes. Not literally. They're not literally inside a large bubble, by the way. They're calling it a bubble. It's a great it's so a safe space that you've created where people can mix. So it's not literally they're not literally sitting inside a giant plastic bubble, even though I would like to see that. I would like to see Mr. Steve's mum and Steve's sister sitting inside a large plastic bubble, maybe rolling down the side of a hill together. Very nice. It's so the second so Sunday we, of May. Oh, uh, so yeah. we can say whatever we want about your mum today. Oh, that's great. Anyway, happy Mother's Day. Sadly, we can't see my mum and she doesn't even know who I am anymore. So no, which is a great shame. Um, talking of Mother's Day, um, people were commenting on flowers from uh, Holland. Mm. Uh, and of course, there was a, there was quite a story on the news yesterday. Yes. Uh, that the cost of flowers uh, most of which in the UK we get from Holland apparently yes I, I did actually mention this did you I've, I've actually talked about this sorry but it's... I noticed because I had to order some flowers because I can't visit my mother because I'm not in that bubble because we live a long way away mm -hmm. so I ordered some flowers for my mother over the internet lots of companies that do that and I notice that the cost of those flowers has increased significantly. Yes. Uh, since the last time I ordered some flowers, like 20, 30 percent more. Wow. It was a big increase. And then that was a week ago. I ordered them in time for today and they were delivered yesterday. Um, and then there was a news item saying how due to various factors, COVID, lockdowns uh, and the increased costs now that companies are going to have to pay now that we're out of Europe, that the cost of flowers is going up significantly. Mm. Oh, we both saw that. Um, so no more flowers for my mother. No, that's it. Next year. Sorry, too expensive. What, what could be cheaper than <laughs> flowers? Maybe some groceries, maybe some tins of beans. So uh, no doubt, and they are, I noticed that they are finding new markets okay. to sell their flowers because probably 
up, they will see a reduction in sales into the UK hmm. due to the. In I mean, thirty percent increase is a lot. That's a, that's a lot to put on the price. It is, and flowers aren't cheap anyway. No, that's it. So, I, I always think. Sometimes I think that giving flowers is is a little sad because you you receive the flowers, but then you have to watch them slowly die. It's like, it's like receiving an animal that only has three days to live. So you receive an animal and then you have to watch it over three days slowly drop dead. <laughs> so it's a bit like that, really. So even though it's lovely to receive flowers and I do love receiving flowers and so does Steve and so does Steve's mum and s most people, I would imagine. But there is some there is a tinge, a slight tinge of sadness because you have to then watch them wither away and die. Lovely. So ha only you, Mr. Duncan, could turn uh, a lovely gift of flowers into something sad. No, it's, it's just an observation, really. That's all and it is, unless you want an argue, argument. Our, our friend to... Martin is on. Who? Hello, Who? Martin. Martin. Who's that? Martin. I'm Martin. not going to say Martin's surname. Well, it, it's... OK, I don't know anyone called Martin, to of be honest. Of course you do. No, I don't. I don't appears know. with me in uh, no. various uh, I have no idea. plays and no musicals. Idea. Never heard of you. He does. Marty D uh, <laughs> is, uh, is our lovely friend who is watching us today and says, you'll have to buy chocolates. Yes. Well, actually, I did send some chocolates with the flowers, which is the first time I've ever done that yeah. because what I did was because the price of the flowers had gone up, <laughs> okay. I sent less flowers and added some chocolates. Welcome to the flower hour. And uh, they were Italian chocolates, apparently. Oh. And I didn't know what they would be like, but my mother was so excited. Here's the thing, Steve. How about flowers that you can eat? Ah. Chocolate flowers, chocolate flowers or candy flowers. So maybe flowers that that are made are of, I don't know, marzipan or some sort of icing uh, or some sort of candy. And then and so you receive the flowers and then you can eat them. So you get a lovely bunch of flowers and then every morning you come down and you have a look at the flowers, you, you smell them and then you Oh, very nice. These daffodils are very lovely. They're very nice. Please send me some more of these. I think if you eat daffodils, I think they're poisonous. No, but no, not real daffodils. Chocolate. They're these. Yeah. <laughs> Don't. Please. I know. I know. I feel very silly saying this, but please don't eat daffodils or any type of flower. OK, you can eat tulip bulbs. OK, if you if you want to. <laughs> uh, I don't think they're very good for you, but I remember there was a, a <laughs> during the war. This is the Second World War. Uh, then if you'd uh, I think in places like Holland, uh, for example, um, what is it? There You're... was a shortage of food and people were eating to survive eating the uh, tulip bulbs. Oh, okay. uh, very resourceful. Still, so we hadn't got that option here because Still, we don't really plant imagine tulips. imagine next spring this so if you eat the the bulbs imagine next spring you will have lovely daffodils and tulips coming out of your ears and your nose and other places victoria says that uh, i eat marigolds okay now is it do you like make a tea from it I don't know. I have no idea. Marigolds, uh, the lovely, uh, lovely yellowy orange flowers that uh, that flower for ages in the garden. They're mm. very. They give a lot when you plant marigolds because they seem to carry on flowering all through the summer. Anyway, Steve, Pedro is getting frustrated because it's now three o'clock. In fact, it's one minute past three. You can blame Steve for that. Talking about his pansies. And Look, his daffodils. Belarusia, I eat broccoli, which, as we know, is actually a flower. OK. And cauliflower. So we are eating flowers. Yeah. We, in fact, we had broccoli last night. It's just... <laughs> just saying, yes. Steve has no we concept. We eat flowers. OK, Steve, we've got that. All right. Well, I'm just pointing it out. No need okay. to put me down. I'm not putting you down. It's just that You're we have... You're after a fight. <laughs> <laughs> I think you are. <laughs> Here we go again. 
it's time for flags of the world and if your country is missing from this list please let me know and i will try to put it in sometime next week yes it's flags of the world everyone get ready to wave your flags in the air back i hope you've enjoyed that the flags of the world for all those who have their flags in their hands right now i hope you were waving yours around in the air <laughs> well we know one flag's missing don't we yes uzbekistan i think that is missing but i have found the flag so i'm going to try and edit the flag into my flags of the world so if there is one missing maybe there is uh, maybe your country is missing from the flags of the world then just let me know and i will i will try to put it right i will try my best <laughs> i i noticed earlier we've got uh, fernando hello fernando fernando if you're still here it's from brazil but living in oxford oh so that's probably the closest i'm going to come to visiting anybody in brazil mm. that's almost uh, you know living in oxford that is almost worth a fancy pants, I think so. What are you doing, Mr. Duncan? Okay, that's enough. Wasn't sure what I was supposed to do then. <laughs> Just do what I'm doing. I'm not, I'd never regard myself as street. Street. <laughs> I can't stop somebody now. Somebody who is. Uh, Let's just say somebody who is uh, has a lot of friends and spends a lot of time on the street. I think that was what that means. Probably playing music. Uh, probably very sociable. What? I suppose a street person, somebody who's very with it, savvy, knows knows a lot of what's going on in the world, in in in, in their environment. A street person, somebody who's street. Go on then, Mr. Duncan. What, I don't know. I have no. There, there, there aren't many moments where I just <laughs> completely lose. Well, that music, it was like street music, wasn't it? Yes, it's, well, sort it, of, it's sort of funky. Yes. So I, you were dancing. 
Well, you would, you would, somebody who danced to that music, you would say they were street, you know. I, I don't know, I'm just saying that. By the way, if you're watching the recording, you can skip, <laughs> you can skip this. This, I don't know what this is. Just skip forward. Just keep pressing the button. It's just a word. Okay. Are you street? Okay. Are you down with your friends and right. uh, having a good time and out there talking? I don't know. Is that what it means, street? What would you think if I said if someone was street? How would well, you? Well, it just means they're wise. That's it. Exactly. That's yes. it. That's all well, I wanted well, you to help me out. We even use the word wise with street. You are street wise. Street wise. That's it. Exactly. <laughs> so uh, that is something that would not describe either of us well maybe you <laughs> i think you've just proved that <laughs> i'm not I, I wouldn't say i was street wise i'm I a bit naive i think i am i am more in tune with current things that, than steve is because i like watching different things on the internet i always like to see what is trending in the world so i always try to keep ahead or at least try to keep up with all of the new trends you see that are taking place around the world Ooh, very nice we are we've got a lot to do haven't we Mr. We, we still have we've got flag we've got flags of the world that, that we've just had but this week something came through the door can you see this don't worry I've covered up the address you can't see it this week we received the census application so we have to actually fill this in and then we have to send it but in fact, this year, for the first time this year, Steve, you can do the census online. It's never been done before. Really? So, so you actually this year have the option to do this online. The census. So every 10 years here in the UK, they, they do. I suppose you could describe it as a survey of every person living in the country. So they are trying to find out or work out the ages, uh, the nationalities, if you've come from another country to come and live, where you actually came from originally, uh, who you live with, what your standard of living is, what your ethnicity is, which is, which is, can I just tell you, a few weeks ago, I had my flu injection. And the woman who was giving it to me asked me some questions. And it's very weird. She asked me what my ethnicity was. And do you know what? I couldn't think of what to say. It's very strange. It's, it's not a question I get asked very often. What, your, what, what is your ethnicity? And I just looked at her with a blank face. I sort of went, oh, uh, 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 well, <laughs> because it doesn't happen very often. Isn't that strange? Well, is that why? Why was I so shocked by that? But it doesn't happen very often. People don't often ask what your what your ethnicity is. So I, I couldn't I, I didn't know what to say. And she said, I'm going to put put white. <laughs> oh, OK. Yes, it's yes. We, they have to ask now. Uh, thank you, Pedro. Uh, moderators in action. Uh, and uh, Flags of the World, we, you, you can't have missed Flags of the World. Pedro says, where's Flags of the World? It's been on. Yes. We, Maybe you went to the toilet. Maybe you were doing <laughs> something else. It's definitely been on, Pedro. It was on yes. at what, one minute past three. Yes. It, <laughs> it should have been three o'clock. So the census is something that, that we have to do every 10 years. So what about you? Do you have a similar thing where you have to fill in? A question form a, a questionnaire about your lifestyle your situation your your race your age all of these things even your sexuality Ooh. all those personal things I, I wonder if it actually gives us a list in here Should I have a quick look? you can have a look but I think it's got our names all over it well I won't I'm not that stupid, Mr. Duncan. Well, <laughs> uh, that's here we go. Here we go. Here's a nice little report. So I'm just putting something else on the screen here, Steve. So so this is what okay. you normally get when you open the envelope. It's time to complete your census. And what you then do, you have to fill it in. Answer all of the questions that apply to you. Quite often they will be about your personal life 
the information that is I don't know maybe some people think that this is very personal information that they are giving over uh, and one one interesting one this year so this is a new addition this year Steve yes there is a sex question <laughs> okay <laughs> what is your sex is it male or female but also you have the option of of uh, option <laughs> option of answering another question an extra question what your gender identity is so do your you do you consider yourself to be trans you see so so that is something that has actually been added for this year's census so besides your male and female boxes you also have another one that can that, that allows you to put your your gender if you are if you are trans which which a lot of people have been asking for and it would appear that uh, they have been listened to very good so that's what we're doing at the moment what about you do you have a census do you do you have to do this every 10 years you have to answer all the questions one interesting thing steve <laughs> the people that are doing all of the all of the arranging for the for those who are collecting the information can you believe it they are based in switzerland i just think that's great so the, so the company that is overseeing <laughs> the the logistics for the census in the uk is actually based in switzerland Pedro, which, I, which i think is brilliant <laughs> pedro was i don't think it's switzerland in the european union i don't think it is i've got a feeling it isn't yes but it, it could have been uh, a company here in the well UK. yes you'd <laughs> yeah. have thought so i just think that's brilliant they must be better at it just like they're better at making watches than we are and chocolate and chocolate uh pedro was chatting with uh friend zelia ah. so missed flags of the world yes it was there we did do it <laughs> unless uh, unless we are both having some sort of uh, mental breakdown and, and maybe we just imagined it why are you <laughs> filling out that form says kim you because we have to in fact if you don't fill it in yes you will get a fine yes they will fine you or or send you to prison yeah ultimately yeah That's quite serious if, uh, if you don't they'll send you to prison they've done it forever they I will, think for hundreds of years. Yes, I think it was. I want to say the 1800s. I think it was the late 1800s when they started doing it on a 10 year basis. But yes, it's been done for a long time. I always remember my parents had to fill it in and they never knew what to put <laughs> next to my name. So they had to put your the names of your children and then and then other details. But they always got a bit confused with with the, some of the questions. It's just basically they want they, to. Uh, they didn't know. They just put question marks next to them. <laughs> I mean, you'd think that they would have a fairly good uh, information on everybody, but they just want they just want to try and get a very complete picture yes. of of the population, ages, ethnicity, yes. sexuality, all that sort of thing. Now it's been. Uh, a little controversial there's been a lot of uh, well it happens every time every time the last time it was controversial the time before a few it, people saying that they a very f f uh, small number of people saying that they don't want to fill it in they think it's they think it's wrong but of course we've been doing it forever hmm. and they're worried that the information will be used to track them or something but i mean let's face it if you're on any kind of social media, you're being tracked anyway. Yeah, there's no way unless you're a criminal, you've got nothing to worry about. Really. Well, you're not going to put that on the census, are you? Uh, and I mean, you can always make it up. <laughs> Feather, what is your occupation? Um, I, I like to burgle houses when the occupants are away on holiday. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, since 1801 apparently yeah well there you go i was right According to martin yeah. thank you very much yes. for that and, and thank me as well because i was right with my info i got that from my skull what an ego that came from what an ego that came from my brain yeah we just have to fill it in just so that i mean it helps with planning of schools yes. and and uh and uh infrastructure and and sort of spending local 
council spending. Yeah. It helps to know these things so that you can plan, sco- particularly schooling and healthcare yes. in the future. That's what it's for. And the reason why it's every 10 years is because things change. So some people might emigrate, move away. Some people might come here to live. Some people, of course, <laughs> will die. <laughs> so over a 10 year period. So imagine over over 10 years. The, the number of people that, that die and also the number of people that are born over 10 years. So that's the reason why it's every 10 years. So it is it is gathering. I guess the word I would use is demographics, the demographics. So all of the details are of the population everything connected to their lifestyle uh, and who they are as individuals i suppose yeah it's it's it, 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 it's to help with sort of council planning and and, and sort of yeah schools that sort of thing <laughs> uh because obviously if, if you if you if you don't have a correct you don't have that knowledge of the of the population the ages and ethnicities and things like that then it's difficult to plan uh infrastructure yes projects yes um i'm think i'm thinking of just sabotaging mine and just putting all the wrong <laughs> answers so it might ask ethnicity and i might put eskimo you see is that an ethnicity well it, it could be it doesn't there's yeah. nothing to say it isn't so so maybe I could be I become one of the Eskimos from from the Arctic Circle and I could put that and I could say I live in an igloo and I need lots of ice delivered to my house every day to, to stop it from falling down. So I might do that, you see, and, and they might say uh, under your sexuality, I might say, I don't know, <laughs> I, I'm into trees. <laughs> I like going around the trees where the woodpeckers have been. Uh, I don't know what to, anyway Valentina says um, yes I would say the correct phrase it depends the bees are flying uh, well it depends what you want to say really the bees are flying among the flowers over the flowers or above the flowers well it depends well, on all correct it depends on their position yes. so when you're describing something that is happening then a thing can happen in many different ways so you might go over the top, you yes. might go through, you might go round and round. So it, it really depends on the direction of the thing you are describing. So there is no definite way of describing those things that you've just mentioned because they are all individual actions. That's it. Flying among something is, is, is you know, in and out of the flowers above, below. Hmm. Uh, above them is just above. Uh, uh, yeah, so it depends what you want to say. I think you're probably thinking about the bees being around the flowers. Yes. Around would be a good one. The bees are flying around the flowers. Well, you're, n you're normally amongst many things. Yes. So if there's one flower, you can't be amongst one flower. You go round and round an individual thing. So one thing you go round it, you are near to it. But if there are many things and you are going through them, you might say that you are going through or around or amongst. So in British English, we actually say amongst amongst you are amongst things. You are going around them, but you are near to, to that area where they are anyway we've got to move on Steve good good got right to move on got to move on we haven't even done the silent and noise words and that was the main part of today's <laughs> live stream can you add another live stream a week says Alessandra the answer to that is no at the moment because I'm making my full English lessons unfortunately I can't do two live streams and make full English lessons at the same time because it takes around three days to make my full English lesson. You might not believe that, but just 10 or 12 minutes of a video takes around three days to actually make <laughs> filming, editing. Maybe you have to add some things that, that are unique to that lesson. So it takes around three days to make one lesson. <laughs> 
So, yes. So, yes, Valentina, they're all correct. It just depends on what you actually specifically want to say about where the bees are. OK. But, yeah. <laughs> I think we've answered that. Olga, we had a similar survey here. I don't understand why we had it nowadays with all of our data that is now saved on the government databases. They know everything about us already. That's it. Yes, it is interesting, though. I think the census used to be collected uh, and this goes right back i think it goes right back to to the romans if i'm not mistaken this was actually a form of taxation so it was the way that they collect tax I think it goes back to the magna carta i think no no originally. no way back no the original use of the census the word okay. itself oh, right, yes. the word itself is, is is relating to the original poll tax which was collected and we're, we're going back two or three thousand years now, by the way. <laughs> so it wasn't last week or last year. So the original use of census was a way of finding out who was doing what, where <laughs> and, and How? Coll collecting tax from them. So that's the original use of the census going way back in time, way back, way, way back in time. How's that? What's next, Mr. Duncan? Well, I think we, we might have the sentence game coming up in a few moments. I was hoping Is it to that late already. Yes, it's 25 past three. Don't you know? So the Rose sen is going. Bye bye. Rose. See you later, Rose. Rosa. Uh, yes, I mean, exactly. I don't think you have to fill in every question, but uh, I think as uh, as as uh, was it? Uh, Rosa, Olga already said, I think they pretty much know everything about us anyway. And if anybody <laughs> wanted to find out anything about you, uh, any any sort of person in authority, all they'd have to do is look on social media. Yeah. And most people are on social media. They would then know everything about you. <laughs> the, the one thing I always find slightly disturbing about people on social media these days is how much they they photograph and film their children and i've noticed this on on many many of my fr friends in the uk but also around the world they, they have lots and lots of photographs that they take of their children all the time and they just put them on on the internet without a second thought and i always i always feel slightly wary of that i, I would if i was a parent <laughs> i'm not by the way but i would be really cautious about just throwing photographs of, of my kids on the internet not not because there might be creepy old men watching but also the fact that, that, that maybe you should ask the children <laughs> whether they want their pictures putting on there even if they are very young maybe five or six you could still say D -d is it okay if I put the photograph on to well, Facebook for okay. everyone to look at so yeah, I, well, it's just my person. <laughs> Let's not start arguing. But it's just just a feeling that I have. I just feel yeah, it's not quite right. Well, celebrities do it, yeah. Steve. I was going to go to celebrities. Mart Martin's off. Bye, bye for now. See, speak to you soon. Martin's had enough. He's going to there do is. other things to do with his life. Yes. Well, <laughs> okay, that's good. <laughs> I don't know what that says about everyone who's staying behind. <laughs> I think it's all right to put. Uh, if you want to put pictures of your own kids on, but you probably wouldn't put pictures of other people's but on. Celebrities do it. You? Well, no, yeah. well, no, that's <laughs> that's a very different thing altogether. But celebrities do it all the time. They do it on Instagram. See, again, this is something I'm more in tune with. What people put on. Oh yeah, I know they do. I know they do. Instagram. It, yes. yeah. They're always taking pictures of their kids and putting it on there. And it's just I don't know. It just seems strange to me. It just seems a little, you it's know, up to them. Yes, it's up to them. <laughs> A lot of people are going now. Stay. We've got the sentence game. Yes, it's your fault, Steve. <laughs> so it looks as if we will have to hold the words connected to silence and noise because we won't have time. That's that's around half an hour, you see, to do that. So instead, we are going to go straight into the sentence game. That is what we are going to do right now as we approach. 27 minutes past three o'clock here in England. <laughs> 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 
you see I, I have so many things planned <laughs> so much planned and then we spend 20 minutes talking about flowers and now we can't we can't do most of what I plan it's all right Steve don't worry I'm not angry have you got enough sentence game examples to last half an hour I've, I've got enough of those good so I always plan around half an hour so th I know this is very boring by the way but when I'm planning something if I'm planning a bit of script or if I'm planning something to talk about I always have a time how long something will take I always have it in my head so I can I can guess that something will take two minutes to talk about or five minutes to talk about or half an hour to talk about so I always have that somewhere in my head a rough idea an idea of how long it will take to talk about it <laughs> including me talking about <laughs> how long things take <laughs> to be done oh. 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 it's like it's like a never-ending we don't need to know your process, Mr. Duncan. We just want to see the end result. A lot of people like my process. They they want to know how I do it. How have you managed to do this 15 years, Mr. Duncan, without going completely crazy? I don't know. We have the right sentence we ha game. We have the sentence game. It is a pity that Tomek isn't here. No, last week he said he wasn't. He was. Yes. It was his last one, and he wasn't. We're, we're come missing anymore, Tomek. So we're, we, Could, we can say all sorts of rude things about Tomek now, can't we? Well, no, he's not here. Well, <laughs> you, you, it would appear that you seem to think so. So sadly, sadly, Tomek isn't here anymore. No. We, we we had to say goodbye to him last week because he he didn't like the fact that we were talking about daffodils and Meghan Markle. So that's it. It's all I don't over. Think so. I it's all over so. it's a sad sad end of an era <laughs> here, here we are then <laughs> the sen the sentence game is here <laughs> noise words faster mr duncan <laughs> come on click 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 it's all right i'm i'm having a little laugh i'm smiling this this thing on my face is called a smile by the way I know, I know you don't see them very often, especially when you're looking in the mirror, but it's it's smile, you see? Smile. I will do this instead. So here we go. There you go, Steve. So now Mr. Steve is smiling. I was smiling anyway. Oh, get on with it, Mr. Duncan. Oh. The sentence game. So all you have to do is... Like pulling teeth. All, all you have to do is work out what the missing words are in each sentence here is the first one right now oh they are all connected to noise they are all <laughs> can you see now what i did i planned all of this today <laughs> so i was going to talk about noise and silence and then i was going to do this but we didn't have time to talk about noise and silence so this this now is sort of meaningless. <laughs> People are asking if Mora's here. Mora. Well, Mora is very good at the sentence well, that's game. That's it. Very good. The Tess and uh, yes, also um, Jimmy from Hong Kong. Yes, Jimmy. And, uh, Jimmy is often very good. Anything yet? I can't. I can't. Something with yep. that. I can't something with that something something going on something we have s t r and o five letters eight letters six letters seven letters connected to noise by the way just dropped what do you I just dropped my pen top I've noticed when Steve stands next to me during the live stream he never stands still he's always moving well, you should you should move around it's good for your circulation he's always uh, playing with something yeah so um a few people are making suggestions already good uh silver has suggested as has palmyra that the first word could be stand yeah yeah well yes it could well be 
Uh, I can't stand maybe. Mm. It's more of an action. Ah, that won't no stand wouldn't fit, would it? Yes. Would it? Something that you are trying to do but you can't. In fact, I gave you a clue at the start of today's live stream. I gave you a big clue. So everything I had planned today was was all going to join together nicely. But then Mr. Steve came on and that's it. It, it all went to pieces. That's it. It all fell apart. What about sleep? I can't sleep. What do you think? What do I think? Well, I know the answer. <laughs> I, I ah, I'm not going to guess, you see, because I already know the answer. Uh, that would be. What about Mora here? Mora has come to life. Oh, on the live chat. Oh, oh very good. Wow, Mora, Mora is very good. Mora, Mora. Very good. Yes, that's. Is it correct? But yes, one of them is wrong. One of them is wrong. Blues bird. Congratulations, Blues Bird. You've got one of the words correct. See, what I would say is you should all join together and they help, do. help they each do. other. So it's quite good. It's quite good. Think of this is as something you can do as a team. You know what they say? There is no I in team. There we go. So the art, the, 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 the answer is there. The first word. Uh, there we go. I think I think the we've got enough examples there, enough suggestions. OK. To come up with the answer. Nobody's come up with the full answer yet. The first word isn't speak. Hmm. Jimmy is here now. Hello, Jimmy. Jimmy from Hong Kong. Nice to see you again. Mm hmm. Oh, right. Yeah, there we go. Mm -hmm. So I think we've got all of the words, but some of them are being given by by one person and then another person is getting other ones right, whilst at the same time getting some of them wrong. So in there on the screen is the right answer, but but they are in different messages, if that makes sense. Oh, Sylvia. Sylvia. Not quite. No, there's still a word missing, but Sylvia is very close. And uh, Pedro has got the has got got it correctly. A few people have had Blues Bird. Got the first word right. Mm. Uh, and so did Sanjar actually oh. earlier on. Well done, Sanjar. Sanjar got it earlier on as well. Um, so Sanjar was the first person to get the first word right, and then Mora got the last three right. Okay. Um, so that's it. Yeah. Okay, Valentina. Let's have the answer then. Valentina's yeah. put them all together. Ah, oh, okay then. Yes. Uh, so is Vittoria, in fact. So this relates to something you are having difficulty doing for a certain reason. So I, I will explain what this means. Come on, Mr. Cockrell. Mr. Cockrell, where are you? Ah, time is up, as they say. The answer is. Bing. Ah, I can't sleep with that terrible racket going on outside so you can see the word there racket racket is another word for noise so a noise that is very irritating or annoying a loud noise or a loud sound that you oh it won't go away like the other night when i was trying to sleep and there was a combination of the wind blowing outside and Mr. Steve walking around the house like a zombie, making these moaning sounds. Very strange. So those two things were happening at the same time. So I couldn't sleep the other night because I could hear Steve floating around the house like 
like some strange ghost <laughs> moaning because he was having a little bit of a fever so but racket another word for annoying noise if you go into a uh, go into a room and there's a lot of people excitedly talking and you can't hear yourself think you say mm -hmm. what a racket mm. uh, now a lot of people put the word stand as the mm. first word which is a five letter word mm. but grammatically it doesn't quite I know what I know what you're trying to say you can't yeah. stand that terrible noise if you just take out the the word with yes from that sentence it would be grammatically correct you yes. could say i can't stand that terrible racket going on outside yes. but you can't say i can't stand with that no that doesn't that's not grammatically correct no so in this particular sense that steve is mentioning stand means bear so something you are able to tolerate or take you can't stand that noise i can't stand that noise i can't bear it but this particular sentence is different it has a different meaning i can't sleep with that terrible racket now, going on jimmy from hong kong uh put a sentence together and instead of the word racket actually got it correctly mm. earlier on by saying got the sleep the terrible and the outside words correct mm. but replace the word racket with rumble yes you could use rumble because that is a type of sound yes so rumble perhaps there is some thunder in the distance you might say i can't sleep with that terrible racket or that terrible rumble Maybe the sound of thunder. But a, a rumble is a particular type of sound. Mm, yes. Well, uh, that thunder is like yes. a rumble. Or a, or a constant sort of low frequency sort of noise. Mm. But uh, so that's quite specific. The word rumble is a specific type of sound. Yes. Racket re relates to any sound, any noise that might be annoying and of course just like earlier when i was talking about smells at the start of today's lesson sounds some people might not be annoyed by certain sounds but some people might be very annoyed by it so maybe the sound of the rain falling some people find that very relaxing whilst maybe some people might find it very annoying the sound of the rain constantly falling on their on their house it's a very popular word to use what a racket mm. will you will, will you, like children if you a group of children playing yes uh, might make it a sound that is annoying to you and you would say what a racket mm. shut that door i don't want to get rid of that racket yes. my mother used to tell me when i was playing my music in the early 1980s when i had my human league and my ultravox and my spandau ballet playing very loud or loudly on my <laughs> record player my mother used to say can you please turn that racket down yeah T oh turn that racket down so to you it was a nice sound but mm. to your mother it was a very annoying sound so and any annoying sound you can describe yes. as a racket music from the 1980s most of it sounded like this Yeah, that's a racket that's it that's the 1980s the music from the early 1980s in a nutshell <laughs> shall we have another sentence game mr steve because i think we should have another one is that all right that's, that's fine yes yes that's it. oh too late i read it t You've retracted it, but I've already read it okay. too late. Who is who is this T? No I, idea. I don't know. No who, idea. I don't know who T is. It's, but it's nice to have T on. It's nice to have you here, by the way. Yes. T, or should I say, Mr. T? See, there's, a, there's are, are a. you are you Mr. T from the A team? I pitied the fool. I pitied the fool. How can you? I can't make these emojis any bigger, can I? No. Uh, don't press anything, Steve, please. No. I, I did agree with the comment, by the way. Yeah. 
anyway. I did agree with it <laughs> did it have anything to do with Meghan Markle <laughs> yes no we're not and Saturino says stop about Meghan please yes please enough <laughs> We don't want. Uh, and I, I think we all know who T really is. Yes, don't we? Well, I think T is Tarmac. Yes. You've know, been rumbled. We know it's you. You've been rumbled. We, now, we went there, Steve. <laughs> Before you fire any more information in my ear, we know it's you. By the way, we're, we're quite clever. We can just tell between us. <laughs> We might we might be stupid on our own, but together it's like our brains join uh, and we become one entity together. So even though we only have half a brain each together, we have a complete brain, you see. So we've worked out already that T is Tomek. Olga's guessed it as well. Yes, he wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest with you, <laughs> to be honest, you didn't make it very difficult. One, you were you were correcting somebody on the uh, on on the incorrect use of, of, of uh, your country name earlier on, so that gave me a clue. And then you get dropping in little hints uh, to try and wind us up. <laughs> I I recognised I I recognise your snarkiness. <laughs> I said that's definitely Tomek because I recognise his snarky comments. By the way, uh, when I said you've been rumbled, okay, which is now we used the word rumble earlier, didn't we? Yes, as a this, sound, as a, a low frequency sort of sound. Okay. But if you've been rumbled, it means you've been found out. Yes. So the thing, for something, the thing you were trying to hide. The thing you were trying to hide has been discovered. So you're maybe if you are trying to hide your identity, you are pretending to be someone else. But then a very clever person or two clever people like us discover that you are actually the person who we thought you were. We can say that we rumbled you. So you have been rumbled. But it, it's good to have you. It's good to have you. We were a bit worried last week when when uh, Tomek said that he was. This was thank you for all the years. Well, you did. You did. And, dis uh, you did describe the Netherlands as the the Nether regions. Uh, well, let's not go back into that, Mister Dunn. I can't believe you said that. No, I didn't. I didn't say it like that. But anyway, trust you to bring that up. Right, on to the next one, Mister Duncan. <laughs> Mister T will now disappear and say this is his last ever show. And then come back as something else next week. Yeah, uh, I think next week. I think uh, he'll be he'll be Mr. Tom next Mr. week. Mr. T will, will will use another word, another letter. Yeah, to but disguise the, no, his real Steve, self. Steve, he will not be able to resist making sarcastic, snarky comments, and that's <laughs> it. We like that. You are the only person on here that does that. We like it. Don't stop it. Yes. Well, <laughs> <laughs> not all the time. And. Uh, <laughs> But right. OK, so on to the next one. It's amazing. Only 40. We've only done one in 45 minutes. <laughs> Steve, Jaw Dow says my wife just came into the room and told me to turn that racket <laughs> down. So we were the racket. We were the racket. So our voices. Oh, right. Very annoying. OK, I'm sorry about that. I can't do anything about my voice. Maybe Mr. Steve's I can change. Maybe I can cut something off. To make his voice a little higher, perhaps. <laughs> Here's another sentence game, oh, Steve. Because it's good. It's nice to have a bit of fun, isn't it? And, and, and a laugh on the live stream. And uh, yes, on to the next, Mr. Duncan. 15 minutes. 15 minutes before we go. We might have a little bit longer, actually, because I was slightly late coming on. Here we go, Steve. Here is today's second sentence game right now. Oh, if you have something to something, it's best to something, something. If you have something to something, better to something, something. Uh, right. OK. Yes. Yeah, so this is to do with uh, noise. Words connected with noise. Uh, Thu Nugent wants to know who I am, I think. Mr. Steve is someone 
that I found one night sitting at the bottom of the garden he was sitting under a giant toadstool and I wasn't sure what it was I wasn't sure if it was a, if, if it was a gnome or a fairy it turned out <laughs> to be neither of those oh okay then uh, so this, that's the reason why I call him Tinkerbell sometimes. I'm not new. I've been around for a while. Yeah. Um, I'm usually here on Sundays with Mr. Duncan. Yes. And we usually have big flaming rows. Yes, every week we normally end up sl arguing, slapping. There is a lot of slapping taking place normally. Uh, uh, oh, a lot of people have got this right. Oh, right. Okay. Oh, well oh, done. Okay. A lot of. A I lot of all that was. Yes, yes. A lot of people correct on the money, as they say. If you are on the money, it means you are correct on the nose. So Maura, I think, technically was uh, on the nose. You are correct. You are correct. Uh, a lot of people getting this right. Okay, Steve. Uh, including T, whoever that is, uh, also got it right. Sylvia, Lewis, Sanjar, Belarusia, Jimmy. OK. Uh, Shall we? Well, that one was surprisingly easy. Yes. Well, I didn't uh, I didn't get it. See, I think this one was very naughty, though, as well. Why is it a noise word? Well, w well, when you see it, you will understand why. Well, I have seen it, assuming everybody's got it right. OK. Yes, a lot of people have got this right. Well done. A big thumbs up to all those who got it right. By the way, hello, human being. Human being is here. I haven't hello. seen I haven't seen you for a while. I haven't seen you for a while. You're not Tomek, are you? You're not Tomek. <laughs> is it Tomek again? <laughs> I don't know. So he says I got it right. Yes, a lot of people got this one right. Well done. Congratulations. Here, here comes the answer. And the answer is. Bing. If you have nothing to say, it is best to say nothing. This is actually a good piece of advice. And yes, of course, it, it is. It is connected to noise. Or should I say silence? So if you stop making noise or if someone wants you to say nothing instead of constantly talking. So, yes, you see, it's to do with noise. A person who is talking, they are making lots of noise because they are talking too much. If you have nothing to say, say nothing. Very unusual because we have two of the same words twice. That's never happened before. That has never happened. This is a unique moment, everyone. A unique, special moment of time where we have just four words, but only two separate words, and they are both repeated. And Jimmy uh, uh, quotes the philosopher Ludwig, uh, um, can't pronounce that, Wittgenstein. Ah. Uh, we cannot what we cannot speak about we must pass over in silence yes which is very similar to that phrase in other words if you don't know about a subject it's probably better not to comment in case you reveal your ignorance mm. there was there was actually a Derek Jarman film mm. I believe all about all about him if I'm not mistaken, there was a movie about his early life. Yes, Ludwig Wittgenstein were, was a, a famous philosopher. So what we cannot speak about, we must pass over in silence. Maybe something that you don't want to say, but you feel as if you want to say it. Or maybe something that you're unsure of that you should probably well, keep to yourself. This is something we often get into problems with. Because we're teachers here on the Internet. Well, I wouldn't say I'm a teacher. No. Uh, then sometimes if a subject comes up that is suggested in the live chat, then uh, we, we are tempted to comment on something and uh, we probably don't really know all the facts. So it's very dangerous. So that's a very it's, if we don't know about something, mm. 
don't say anything because you might reveal yourself to be ignorant yes. about a subject. Uh, and of course, the other one is it is better to be thought a fool than to open your mouth and remove all doubt. That is one that I, I I'm sure I explained that a few weeks ago, in fact. And uh, Tomek says, I just wanted to reinvent myself a bit. I love you oh. and the show. So how could I even consider leaving you? Oh, how I lovely. See. Well, we love you too. Oh. And uh, we, as we do everyone who comes on uh, to, to our, our uh, Sunday live streams. Yes. <laughs> I wasn't and, sure uh, if that sentence was going to end. And, uh, <laughs> no, it's, and, and it's, you know, it's good. It's nice to have it's, a bit of fun. It's very good. It's to nice to have a bit talk. of fun and to be tested. It's, That's what we like, people to test us. <laughs> and, you know, just sort of, you know, not be too... Yeah, just to just to push a few buttons now and then and just sort of make us think a bit more about what we're doing. So, uh, yes, so and that certainly happened last week. So you are you are the testers and we are the testees. We are a pair of testees. Would that be a pair of testees? Yeah. Well, well, the people out there are testing. Yeah, they're the testers and we're the testees. So. So, yes, you might describe us as a pair of testees. If you have nothing to type, it's best to type nothing. Yes. So if you have nothing, Georgia, nothing yeah. to say, it is sometimes better just to hold it in and say nothing at all. Shall we have one more? I think we've got we've got time for one more, Mr. Steve, before we have to shoot off. And we're going into the kitchen. I'm hungry. My voice is going hoarse. We have a hot cross bun and a cup of tea and maybe <laughs> Maybe, maybe an episode of Columbo. Can I have one of your strepsils? If you must. My voice is going hoarse. OK. It's been like that ever since I had that bloody vaccine on Monday. OK. I've lost my voice as well. Well, that's that sounds like a good side effect. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. So here's one more, Steve, before we go. We will be going. I don't know which Columbo episode we will be watching today. Maybe it's the one with the magician, Jack Cassidy, a very famous actor. He was in a lot of TV shows and he, he was the father of David Cassidy, who was actually a famous teen idol during the 1970s. And he, he met a very grisly end. The end of his life was rather gruesome. <laughs> I'm not going to say what it was, but not very nice. Here we Diego, go. Then. Diego, very oh, quickly, Diego uh, or Diego Moreira or Mirira says hello uh, from Brazil. Uh, so I think are you new? People seem to be suggesting that you might be new on there on there so uh, we had somebody else from brazil on today fernando uh who lives in oxford at the moment uh we've got I'll always have a lot of people on from brazil so if you're new tiago or Diego, um welcome i think it's tiago uh yes uh what horrible thing did i do well you you just gargled Right. Oh, I see. Right. Yes. yes. I think it's I think all right. Maybe in some countries that is very offensive. You see. All oh, right. Not you, here. You see, you you forget. So sorry. I've sorry if I've offended yes. anyone. La, um, next one, Mr. Duncan. Move on. <laughs> okay. Very swiftly. Here we go. Yes. Here's Olga. I wish. <laughs> what? Horse. Horse. If your voice is horse. H. O. It's just the same spelling. A R S E. Is that correct? Yes, it's just the same spelling as H -O -A horse. A. No, it's not. When they get too dark, as I say. Oh no, it's H O A R C E. Yes. H S E. I think, isn't it? Yes. H O A R S E. Horse. Just means that your your voice has gone. Uh, you're a bit difficult to. You know, oh, horse doesn't sound the same. It, difficult to speak. I thought you were saying horse. Karim, hello from Pal Palestine. Hello. Yes, like horse, but with an A after the O. Um, H-O-A-R. It actually has the word arse. 
so it's h o followed by arse <laughs> apologies if i've offended anyone with, with the gargling that could be described as a racket couldn't it yes also. oh in some countries that would be very unpolite yes that's it oh i didn't know that yes there you go steve thank you victoria that is correct uh and it just means a voice that's gone difficult to you know well it's strained strained the the, the tone changes it, it uh, can you hear it now it's all very difficult it's, it take, takes on a on, on a on a different tone because yes. it's tired i must say your voice is very difficult to listen to <laughs> normally <laughs> <laughs> often if you get a cold or if you've been shouting a lot your voice goes hoarse yes i won't gargle anymore no no please don't gargle anymore you know steve always does this though he always makes these mistakes these mistakes i remember him when he took a poo on the bus in malaysia and that, you're not allowed to do that there <laughs> you're not allowed to point in malaysia you can't point if you point in malaysia you have to use your thumb so if you point at something in mm. Malaysia, you have to use your thumb, never, never your fingers, always your thumb. Victoria's husband is calling. You have to go. Well, you don't have to obey him. Do you have to obey your husband, Victoria? Uh, say, no, I'm listening to Steve and Duncan. Mr. Steve and Mr. Duncan, I'll be there in 10 minutes. I'm watching two weirdos on well, the internet we understand family must come first steve so see you next week steve just for a moment just for a moment just rest your voice for a few moments we have one more sentence game and then we have to go <laughs> here's the last one steve oh look at all of those missing words five have we ever had five before thank we, you we have Tai nugent i don't know how to pronounce your name i'm sorry Tui nguyen New win. New win is Vietnamese. A lot of people in Vietnam are called New win. Salty water. Yes, that's what I want. So here it is. He was something something and something at a something something. This one is hard. I might regret having this one is the last one <laughs> because it's very difficult. Jim Miller's on 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 her way back home, listening to us in the car. Hello to Jamila, and are you driving the car whilst listening? I hope we are making your journey more exciting and and more interesting as you are driving along the road, looking out for those sudden moments of time that might be unexpected like Mr. Steve saying something sensible. <laughs> uh, T. Valor, sorry, don't know how to pronounce your first name, says, you sure remember Malaysia is my country? Yes. Taki Valor. So we won't we won't point no. if we know you're on because we know That's it would be offensive. That's it, yes. I always remember the, the, the public toilets in Malaysia. They were, they were on the floor. So, so the, the, they didn't have toilets that you sat on that were high up. So the, the, the toilets were, were like in in the floor. Uh, and so you had to sort of you had to sort of squat on your feet in a very strange position. And I always remember if you had a wee that it would splash everywhere. You would end up with very wet legs. <laughs> you could have a good wash afterwards, though, because there was always a nice hose there. Yes, that's what I always love yeah, about. Very hygienic. Very good. You have a lovely hose pipe that you can spray yourself down with. You can almost have a shower in in the public toilets in Malaysia. You can almost have a have a complete bath. <laughs> Olga says the previous um, sentence game improved my self-esteem but this one has brought it back down again oh dear <laughs> no we don't intend we don't that's not our intention no i don't think anyone's got it yet you are back to reality <laughs> it's very quiet are you okay steve well i'm just looking to see if there's um <laughs> i wasn't sure if that was another side effect well <laughs> Sura has had a go. So well done for having a go, Sura, because nobody else has yet. 
Um, <laughs> can I say hello to Mathis? Mathis Baron, who sends a little song. Can I sing this song? Smelly cat, smelly cat, what are they feeding you? Smelly cat, smelly cat, it's not your fault. Is that the correct tune? That is Smelly Cat from Friends. And that was the song that Phoebe used to sing all the time in, in the bar. Oh, that's why. In, that's in the coffee why. bar. Mattis is saying we were on a break earlier on. I don't know why there are all we all these friends references. No, I don't. But we remember that we were on a break. Yes, that's referring it. to the fact that uh, two of the characters, two of the characters, must have uh, split up for a period of time. One had uh, a relationship with somebody else, and then the other one was annoyed. And so there's the other one said, well, we were on a break. Yes. What's your problem? Yes. Our relationship was taking a break so we can see other people. By the way, it was Ross and Rachel. Clearly, Steve did not know who they were. <laughs> well, I had no idea. And then they there was Phoebe, Phoebe and Chandler. So Chandler was always my favourite because he was often sarcastic and, and very silly. Well, that is American even, humor. Is very even, even though the actor who played him was was mostly high on drugs at the time, he doesn't remember most of so, the episodes that he filmed of Friends. I don't think we've got any correct suggestions yet. Mm. Nothing to do. Is anything to do with sand and soil? Um, no. Okay, Sura. Well, thanks for having a go, but it's not quite right. Hard one. Yes. It is a hard one. Uh, Mm, you are passing the limits as human being. Now, what have we got here? He was smart. Is smart one of the words? Um, no. OK. OK, no. OK, imagine someone who vanishes. So someone vanishes, they disappear without trace but then a few days later that person is found and they are they are unharmed they are perfectly all right so that's what this sentence is describing he was something something and something at a something something so we are describing something that has happened in a certain place See, I don't think uh, we. Well, yes, Belarusia, Belarusia. You are very close, ah. very good. Uh, you see, I think Belarusia, Belarusia, Belarusia has her thinking cap on. I think so. Right, mm, Belarusia. Okay. Well yes. done. Yes, yes, pretty good. <laughs> we are getting some interesting suggestions as well. OK, we've just passed the two hour. Well, sweet and sour does work, but it, it's nothing to do with eating. Nessar, Nessar Alam says, I am attending a marriage function right now. So oh. he, here we call it a wedding reception. So the wedding reception is where the the people getting married meet all of the guests and quite often they will have a meal together. So I suppose where you are now is very similar well a marriage function so you're at a marriage function but you're watching us i think that's amazing nisa mm. uh thank you very much and and best wishes to to the bride and groom as well best wishes so belarusia has virtually got all of it so well done so he was mm. found safe and sound so we only need the last two. Let's let's say that is correct. It is correct, isn't it? Belarusia has got the first three words correct. Yes. So actually, we just need the last two. Yes. Actually, I think I might have got one of the words wrong. How strange is that? So that the second S should actually be five letters. So in other words, Belarusia has still got it right. Yes. So no wonder no one can get it. Yes. It's my fault. 
Uh, shall, yes, we, shall we just give the answer? Well, uh, well, let's say yes. So let's. Well, we're, we're saying that Belarusia has got yes. the first three right. Yes, he was found safe and sound. Atta. So all we need is the last two. Okay. Not yes, Jimmy. Yes, you're correct. Yes. Sorry about uh, that. Uh, that's my fault. I have so many things in my brain at the moment. So many a... things to think about. So many, so many plans for the future so many things that I have to deal with including him I have to deal with this you see what about that Mar Maria what is it is that are they the last two words ne yes ne very close very it close. fits it certainly fits yes. Maria so maybe maybe another place that you stay in another place that you might stay in where well, else maybe well, somewhere you live <laughs> Maybe well, a place, they all fit. Maybe a place where you live. Where do you live? What do you call the place where you live? Well, we've got it then in that case. Zutzika, therefore, has got it. Zutzika! Despite my silly mistake, it looks as if we have... Uh, Jordeo Silva also said that as well. Oh. Well, but, got, but, got house right anyway. Yes, yeah, got house. OK, here we go. Let's have the answer and then we can we can leave. <laughs> I'm looking forward to my cup of tea and also my hot cross bun. <sighs> Very nice. Here we go then, Steve. Here's the answer. Bing. He was found safe and sound at a nearby house. Safe and sound. So when something is safe and sound, <laughs> five <laughs> letters, by the way, Mr. Duncan, you silly sausage. Found safe and sound. If you are if you are safe and sound, it means you are in a position where you won't be harmed or maybe you are unharmed. If you are safe and sound, he was found safe and sound at a nearby house. That See, means yeah. the person who went missing was found well and unharmed and uh, you could have put hotel maria hotel would definitely fit at a nearby hotel mm. yeah yes so hotel could be the answer as well i do like it when there are substitute answers as well that fit in the same way that's brilliant so i think that's it i think steve i think we have exhausted the sentence game and also ourselves. That was a good one, but thanks to Belarusia, we, we got that that one yes. got going. I think without Belarusia's help, I don't think anyone would have no. got 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 all of that. Anyway, it's time to go. Time to go. I'll go first. Mr. Steve is going to make a cup of tea and also a hot cross bun. Because yes, Suzika. Uh, Sound has got five letters because Mr. Duncan incorrectly put four. Should have been five. Uh, but yes, lovely to see you all again and hear from you. And um, look forward to seeing you all again next week. That's very nice, Mr. Steve. And don't forget, it is Mother's Day today. Happy Mother's Day to all the mothers who are being treated well and nicely. I hope you have a super duper Mother's Day wherever you are watching in the world even if you are not celebrating mother's day today i still hope that you will have a nice time it's almost time to say goodbye oh parting is such sweet sorrow but don't worry because i will be with you on wednesday not live there is another full english lesson coming your way on Wednesday and yes it is a new one a new full English lesson coming your way on Wednesday I hope you will join me then thank you very much for your company I hope you've enjoyed this today has been Mother's Day we've also had Mr Steve we talked about the census that is now being taken well it's taking place over the next few days we have to record all of our details and then give it to the people who are running the survey. Uh, what else did we talk about? Mr. Steve's chopper. We talked about that. 
We also have the sentence game as well. I hope you've enjoyed it. Thanks for your company. See you on Sunday live next Sunday. But as I just mentioned, I am also with you on Wednesday with another full English recorded lesson. I hope you will join me then. This is Mr. Duncan in the birthplace of English saying thanks for watching. Thanks for joining me today. I will give you a few moments to say goodbye. Take care. Stay happy. Keep that smile upon your face as you walk around amongst the human race. And I will see you very soon right here on YouTube. And of course, until the next time we meet here. You know what's coming next. Yes, you do. Ta-ta for now.